Uh, so breakout session two is going to start in a minute. You can head to uh, the Corfi room or uh, for a discussion on low waste manufacturing or to Kakariki for a discussion and Q&A on called Red, Yellow, Green, What Goes Where? Or you can stay here in Fero for an interview on clothing culture. Uh, the links to the other two rooms are now in the chat. And I'd just like to again uh, thank Sarah so much um, for introducing us to the challenge of food waste. It's great to have you involved, Sarah. Thank you. So we will just um, wait because this next session starts in, uh, in a minute. Uh, so kia ora and welcome to breakout session two in the Fero room. This session is all about clothing culture and takes the form of an interview with Stephen Park of 6x4. If we have time, we'll definitely take questions from the room via the chat. I suspect most of us have some knowledge of how incredibly wasteful um, clothing and resource heavy clothing and fashion are. So here's some stats. Only 1% of material used to produce clothing is recycled and over 100 billion garments are uh, produced each worldwide each year. So only 1% of that is recycled. Most ends up in landfill, releasing greenhouse gas, ga greenhouse gases as they decompose. Every kilo of clothing that's landfilled creates 3.6 kilos of greenhouse gases. A 2018 audit for waste in Christchurch uh, found that the amount of fashion and textile waste we sent to landfill that year was 6,397 tonnes. That creates over 23,000 tonnes of methane, roughly equivalent to the amount released by 230,000 dairy cows in a year. In addition to this, a huge amount of clothing waste is dumped in developing countries. So it doesn't all end up in our landfills we're really good at making it someone else's problems. So that's the problem, but what's the solution? Plenty of incredible people around the world and in New Zealand are working on systemic change in a circular economy for the textile and clothing industry. But for multidisciplinary artist Stephen Park, there's a deeper, more personal change that can be unlocked by examining our relationship with clothing and unleashing its potential in our lives. So welcome Stephen, thank you for being here this afternoon. So could you please tell us what it is that you do with clothing and what is 6x4? Uh, thank you, Jessica. Kia ora koutou. Um, I make things by hand. Um, I make a lot of clothing from secondhand materials uh, and things I find in op shops and things that people donate to me. Um, my interest is not in fashion or in in the aesthetics of what's happening, but more in terms of finding humanness and object culture and understanding what I can make as one person and within my means and my scale as an individual. Uh, so that's what I do with 604. And it's not just clothing, it's things like, you know, furniture and homeware and anything that is a material that uh, talks to the human experience and human object culture. Great. Thank you. So how would you describe our current relationship with clothing? Uh, I guess everyone is pretty aware of how uh, broken the fashion industry is. Uh, it's the second most polluting industry in the world, second to petroleum, and uh, our relationship is something that's quite broken because what the industry offers and proposes is essentially way too much clothing. We have to choose from this um, sort of like inundation of choice. It's this illusion of choice because realistically, if you go into a shop, there's actually not really that much that's offered in terms of what its, uh, what its cultural background and, um, you know, its discussions of gender and things like that. What's actually an offer is pretty narrow, but we're given this illusion of choice that turns around so quickly. So that's what we have to, um, that's what we have to engage with. Mm. So do you have a sense that what we're currently offered in clothing is sort of impoverished, especially that by fast fashion? I, I think it is. I think it is pretty impoverished because the, 
we, we're so far removed from where the clothing comes from in terms of its raw materials, where it's processed, how it's dyed, who's dyeing it, who's spinning it, who's weaving it into fabric. All of those processes are alienated from one another. And we as consumers, especially in New Zealand, we're so far removed from all of those processes. We used to have a lot of it in the country, but now it's all gone overseas pretty much. Like the last mill in New Zealand closed down a few years ago. So we are really far removed from the process of making clothing and that's like a something that's happened in possibly like the last 50 years where we are finding that we don't have any understanding or any personal connection to the way that things are made but that also is a problem that's not just to do with production but i think it's sort of like a emotional and spiritual problem that we're encountering because clothing is not just the thing that you put on your body it's all of the stuff that comes around it all of the uh cultural and emotional and social um sort of weight that comes to clothing and i think that is a huge part of the way that our um, relationship to clothing has sort of been fractured because what the industry is offering is a really homogenous narrow view of what the body and the clothed body is it comes from an extremely narrow perspective like when i was young if i went into a store there was nothing that presented well, reflected or represented who I was as a a Korean born New Zealander who's also queer like what what is there that reflects who I am you're not going to find that in a pair of jeans and a t-shirt there's nothing that reflects who I am so that emotional and uh I guess you could say like spiritual in a sense like that spiritual reflection of your identity is such a massively important part of clothing, but that's not recognized in the industry because it's trying to homogenize so that you just have this like really fast turnover of micro trends that will just make one small change and then you'll have to buy a new thing and it's gonna break down. Yeah, so I think that's a huge problem in the way that we are interacting with clothing. Yeah, so given that um, we have this impoverished and uh, sort of toxic, um, offer from fast fashion and the industry at the moment. What do you feel clothing could actually be? What is its potential in our lives, and in uh, and culturally and spiritually? Um, I think clothing is something. The discussion around clothing is something that is a little bit sad sometimes because it's often talk, like discussion around clothing can be seen as uh, vain or inconsequential or sort of vapid, but. Really, if we think about what the base of clothing is going to the very beginnings of our species, it's something that's so unique to our experience as humans. It's so unique to our species. And it's so, uh, it's such an interesting phenomenon. If you take, if you, we have to deal with it every day, of course. So it gets kind of pushed to the back of the mind. But if you think about what the basis of clothing is, it's really, really interesting and fascinating. And it can be anything like clothing. If you put something over your body, like if you put a bed sheet on your, over your head, it's a, it's a garment and it's, so interesting it's like it can be so rich and playful and fun and i think we can see even if you maybe don't believe that clothing can be really emotionally loaded like you, i think everyone can think of an example of like a garment that someone wore a lot like you know a pair of slippers or a jumper like that are really really lived in garment even if it was something from fast fashion that garment has and maintains that person's essence there's something about that garment which makes it quite special especially if that person's lived in it for a long time. So I think if we shift the value system of clothing away from fashion, which is about a externally dictated system of value, you know, abstract concepts of what a trend is and, you know, how relevant you are. But if we shift that value system to an internal value system, which is about your relationship and your story to this really interesting, you know, human phenomenon, like clothing historically used to be something so precious to every individual. You'd have maybe a couple of couple of outfits and that would be, you know, one of the most precious things you own because textiles are so expensive to make. But that's shifted so much now. But I think we can find a place where we have, like, to establish our own personal relationships to clothing and the, clo and the clothing that we engage with. And I think that can be something that is really empowering and will, will establish a different way that we can... Um, interact with this thing that can be really empowering and really um really grounding in a lot of ways for who we are as individuals and also how we relate to culture and a culture of waste because that's our context at the moment
Mm. So is there a particular garment that expresses this rich potential that you can share with us? Uh, I guess for me, I, there's a, well, behind me, I'm, there's a, a curtain that I made out of all of the scraps from my studio. They're all cotton uh, and linen scraps that I saved over my studio for many years. And I sewed them into a big curtain last year. But I brought a jumper to show everyone. So this is a, a garment that I found at an op shop. Uh, it was Helen Stein's, um, so not great, but I got it secondhand and I actually was wearing this, I dyed it a lot of times to get this colour and then I was wearing it when I was uh, in a tree house and I fell out and broke my arm and I had to be cut out of it um, by the paramedics and um, while I was recovering, I, I really liked the jumper so I sewed back together the lines where they um, had to cut me out, so there's all of this embroidery down the arm and now this is one of my most valuable garments. It's not even to do with monetary value. If I lost this, I'd be devastated because there's this history in it. Like it was just a jumper that I wore in my studio beforehand, but now it's become something that is so reminiscent and so like, so I don't know, it's really, it's hard to describe it, but I, I love this garment so much because it, it does have the story now. Yeah, I, I think um, that's wonderful. It instantly, uh, feels so much richer than a second hand jumper from Helen Stein's possibly yeah. ever could. <laughs> um, I, and I think, you know, we all, uh, I, for those of us who know your work, um, you know, you are a remarkable craftsperson. Um, but how can the rest of us make our clothing our own and reclaim clothing as something that is culturally and personally rich when we're maybe not as skilled as you are? Uh, I, I think clothing. I think everyone has, everyone engages with clothing. Like even if someone says, oh, I don't really care about what I wear, like everyone engages. And I think everyone has the power to have their own voice in clothing. Like I, I make clothes to sell, um, but I still want everyone to, you know, engage and make their own clothing and interrupt my clothing and, and, and engage in lots of ways because the more we intervene with the clothing that is offered to us, the more we interrupt the system, the more we're taking power for ourselves and we're taking power out of this top-down system which is dictating what is what should be happening and trickling that down through a really broken system if we're taking things even if it's a fast fashion garment that you've bought you know from a store or second hand if even if you're interrupting it by like altering it a little bit like adding some embroidery or like changing it cutting it doing something you're adding your own voice to it and then you have that a different connection to it which is sort of about an internal internal value that you've placed yourself no 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 one else can sell you that it's something that you've created for yourself and you know things like mending and darning even if you go oh like it's not very tidy or neat it's totally fine like the fact that you've done something with your hands you would never see anything like that in a store you would never see hand sewing in a store unless if you're buying from an extremely expensive label because hand sewing is so time consuming and so personal it's like your handwriting seeing hand, hand sewing is like seeing like someone's handwriting and that's so personal and really emotionally loaded so I think if people can see their clothing in that way and see their interventions into their clothing in that way I think we can create a healthier dynamic with our clothing and see clothing as part of the human experience in a really in, um, enlightening and empowering way. Yeah I mean that is remarkable um, way to sort of shift that perspective that we have of clothing um, often most often as fashion and as something that someone else supplies to us and we simply select so that was incredibly as Sarah uh, noted in the chat that was just wonderfully inspirational Stephen so thank you so much for sharing um, your view of clothing with us because I think this is part of the change right is us shifting our relationship with things like clothing um, so we um, it's been just wonderful to hear from you. So thank you. Thank you.